Hello students, welcome to Shore Officer classes. My name is Professor Himadri Datta. So we are talking about the IES question paper okay, for, of 2014 today. So we'll be talking about the general economics paper, paper number one, section A. So today we'll be focusing on section A, question number 1A. So today we'll be focusing on the question number 1A. So first what we'll do is, I'll just read out the question and I will write down the important things which are given in this question. So first of all, it is given if a consumer's utility function is a form of x1 to the power 1 by 3 into x2 to the power 1 by 3. So for that first what we have to do is, we have to write down maximum, which is maximization of utility equals to x1 1 by 3 x2 1 by 3 so a consumer will always maximize his utility which is given by this now here the budget constant is given by subject to p1 x1 plus p2 x2 equals to i so this is the budget constant which is money income equals to p1 x1 plus okay so here this is the budget line equation. Now, she faces prices P1 and P2 and her income is I. Then her indirect utility function is then her indirect utility function is V equals to Three P one P two. So the question is now we have to find whether it is a true statement or not. So first, what we have to do is we need to find out the value of x one and x two by incorporating the concept of Lagrange. So what we have to do is first we write down the Lagrange function, which looks like this: L equals to the utility which is x1 to the power 1 by 3 x2 to the power 1 by 3 plus lambda we have to incorporate this term which is budget constraint which will be if we take these two terms on the right hand side it will become i minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2 so so today we have found the lagrange function to be like this so now what we have to do is we have to differentiate this Lagrange function first with respect to x and then with respect to x2. First with respect to x1, then x in respect to x2. So first when we differentiate this Lagrange function with respect to x1, we get it to be like this. 1 by 3 x1, 1 by 3 minus 1 which is nothing but minus 2 by 3 and this term will remain here. As you can see, this term will remain here, plus, minus, from here we get lambda p1. So, we have found it. Now, given the assumption of interior solution, we would say it would be equals to 0. Similarly, if we differentiate this term with respect to x2, we will get it to be like this. So now what we have to do is, as you can see, this will divide this by this. So what we'll do is, we'll divide this term by this term. In order to do this, what we have to do is, I'm writing it down on the right hand side. It will look like 1 by 3 x1 to the power minus 2 by 3 x2 to the power 1 by 3 divided by 1 by 3 x1 to the power 1 by 3 x2 to the power minus 2 by 3 equals to p1 by p2 so if you divide this term with respect to this we'll get it this way now see if you solve this equation we'll get the value of the equation we'll arrive at the equation x2 by x1 equals to 
P2 by P1, sorry, P1 by P2. So, if you solve this equation, we will get the value of the equation can be solved into this, which is x2 by x1 equals to p1 by p2. Now, I will remove this so that I can rewrite it again. So, so far we have found x2 by x1 to be equals to p1 by p2. Now, from here what we can do is, as you can see, the x2 p2 will be equals to x1 p1. So, x2 p2 is equals to x1 p1. So, this is the finding that we have found so far. We will write it down on the right hand side. This equation, we will name it as equation number 1 because this is needed in order to get the value of x1 and x2. So now what we will do is, we will differentiate the Lagrange function. The Lagrange function that we had, we will differentiate it with respect to lambda. So if you differentiate with, with respect to lambda, you will get, you can do it on your own, you will get the value of equation i minus 2 p1 x1 equals to 0. So you will get the value i minus 2 p1 x1 equals to 0. So now you can see from here, we can put the value of p1 x1 as x2 p2. So we can put the value p1 x1 as x2 p2. So if you do so, it will look like this x2 p2 minus p1 x1. Now if you put the value p1 x1 to x2 p2, we will get it to be i minus 2 p2 x2. Now here from here you can find the value of x2. You can find the value of x2 which is nothing but i by, if you take this on the left hand side and if you cancel minus, it will become i by 2p2. So the value of x2 would be i by 2p2. Now what we have to do is, similarly, the value of x1 would be i divided by 2p1. So you can simply put a star here, star here, this is the value that we are looking for. Now, in case of indirect utility function, what we have to do is, we will write down the function that we have, which is x1 by 3, x2 star 1 by 3. Now, we will put the value of x1 star and x2 star, which we have found here, which is like this, i by 2p2. 1 by 3, i by 2, p1, 1 by 3. So now, if you solve it, we get the value to be i to the power 2 by 3 divided by 2 to the power 2 by 3. p1 to the power 1 by 3, p2 to the power 1 by 3. So, this is the value we have found so far. Now, if you do it, solve it further, i square by 4 p1 p2, we will get. Now, you see, the indirect function cannot take the form this because they both are different. So, we will conclude that the indirect function cannot take the form this, that is v equals to i cube by 3 p1 p2. So, we we'll conclude that this is a false statement. So, I will read the question paper again and I'll repeat what I have done so far. So, first I have written down the utility function, then I have written down the budget constraint, then I have taken Lagrange, Lagrange is nothing but utility plus lambda and the budget constraint. Now, I have differentiated the Lagrange 
with respect to x1 first and then with respect to x2 plus x2 then we have found one equation which is this by equating the first founding and second founding by differentiating the Lagrange with respect to x1 and x2. Now from here what we have done is we have gone further into plotting this value into the x1 x2 variable. So from there we have found the value of x1 and x2. Now we have put that value of x1 and x2 in this function in the v function so indirect utility function from there we have found the indirect utility function to be i squared divided by 4 p1 p2 which is not what it is given here so we conclude that this is a false statement so today we will cover section a 1a general economics paper 1 from 2014 paper thank you for watching the video have a nice day ahead if you have any query or questions regarding this question i will be giving you my number which is 9836793076 9836793076 or you can also go to our website which is www.shourabsideclasses.com there you will find a lot of other videos like this and you will also find various study materials on IES exam. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any query or doubt, you can WhatsApp me on this number. Now have a nice day ahead. Thank you.